Ichabod was, uh, you know, that, the child was named Ichabod because the glory has departed from Israel. Well, anyway, the, uh, the ark became a, a serious problem to the Philistines. They got rid of it, you know, after a few months of plaguing and problems. And anyway, things were, things were still at a pretty low ebb, but they had Samuel. Everybody in Israel knew that Samuel was a prophet of the Lord, and they, were, they, they took seriously everything he said. So there was a measure of, of him holding things together spiritually. But now the time came when he began to get older. The people got to thinking, hey, you know, he's, gonna, he's not going to be with us forever, and things are okay now, but what's it going to be like then? And they finally came to him and said, make us a king like all the other nations. And, uh, of course, he wasn't very happy about that. He took it to the Lord. The Lord said, do what they tell you. They haven't rejected you. They've rejected me that I should rule over them. And so he did. He warned them exactly how it was going to be. This king's going to oppress you. He's going to take your, he's going to tax you. He's, you know, government's never, never changed. It's always been kind of like that. You give people power and it, it, it winds up oppressing the people in various ways instead of serving the people. But in any case... They, uh, they chose Saul, as you well remember, and, and Saul was the choice of the people, head and shoulders above him. He was somebody that was very impressive to everybody, and so he became the king. Well, it wasn't very long before the Lord gave him a very, very explicit, clear instruction about how, what he was to do to go into battle. There was, there was a people that were so wicked that God meant to stamp them out. You know, there's, there's a time when people get to, in that condition, that there's, it's like a cancer, you can't, there's no remedy. And so God wanted them their, and their influence, everything about them, simply to be judged. They had been a thorn in Israel's side and, and hated God, withstood him in every opportunity. And so uh, Saul had the instruction to go and take care of business, and he had a better idea. Instead of destroying everything, he was going to save the rest, the best of the flocks and come and offer them to God and everything was going to be great. Well, it didn't work out very well, did it? And he was rejected as king because to obey is better than sacrifice. And so anyway, the time came for uh, when Samuel sought the Lord and the Lord sent him to the house of a man named Jesse, who was the grandson or great grandson of you might can remember? Ruth. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You see how the Lord, the, Lord was, the Lord was preparing things long before. He, he saved this woman named Ruth, and, uh, and she married Boaz. And, and, you know, a couple of generations later, you wind up with, with Jesse and David and, and all, of his, uh, all of his older brothers. Now, of course, David was, on the, was a low man on the totem pole. He was the, he was the youngest brother, and so he got the... Uh, the dirtiest job, I guess the one that nobody else wanted. Uh, while everybody else was doing the important stuff, he just was out sitting on the hillside watching the sheep. But you know, David had a heart, didn't he? There was something about David that, that took seriously whatever he was given to do. He was an honorable young man, and uh, so he, he got out there and he used his time to learn to worship God, and he took his job seriously. He wouldn't let... Uh, any harm come to the sheep, he just he, he gained a great understanding of what it was to be a shepherd and what it was to be a sheep. And so uh, you remember the occasion when Samuel came to the house of Jesse to anoint a king. And he went, you know, all the sons except David were brought out. And one by one, the Lord said, no, this isn't the one. And he finally got to the end. And do you have any more sons? Oh, yeah, there's David out there. So they sent out and got David. And, and here's the youngest one. And they, and they poured the oil on him, and he was anointed to be king. And the call of God fell upon his life. The Spirit of God came upon him, and he was a different man from that time forward. But you know, there's, there's something that we need to realize, and I think we do in a measure, that the affairs of life are not simply the circumstances, the outward circumstances we deal with every day. We are in the middle of a realm that is unseen to our natural eyes, but it's real. It's a spiritual realm. There are two kingdoms that are at war. There is the kingdom of God, the rule of heaven itself, and there is the kingdom of darkness that has usurped power over God's creation and mankind in particular. And, that, and he has an iron grip, if you will, upon the hearts and the minds of men. 
And if you, if you are one that hears the call of God and is chosen of him and you give your heart to him, you become a target of the enemy. You might as well mark it down. It's not like you, you get on this wonderful highway to heaven, this freeway, if you will, in which there's no, you know, the fence keeps out all the bad guys and you just sail like a straight shot to heaven. It doesn't, I think we know it doesn't work that way. And so David Instead of suddenly going to Jerusalem and say, okay, Saul, God has anointed me. Here I am. I'm ready to take over. All hell broke loose, as a matter of fact. And he went, you know, things went from bad to worse to worse to worse. And what was really going on was the devil was trying, the devil, uh, as soon as he realized this is God's anointed, that was like God painting a target on his back. And he became a target for everything the enemy could throw at him. And his life from that time forward until the day he, he actually got the throne and got the power. In fact, it was really all of his life in varying degrees. There was, he was in a war. And it wasn't that he was going out looking for a fight. He wasn't one of these macho guys. Hey, I'm bored today. Let's go find somebody to fight. This was somebody who was just trying to do the right thing, just trying to hang in there and wait on God. Does this sound familiar? That many times we find ourselves in those kinds of places where we wonder, where did that come from? Why, is, why am I feeling what I'm feeling? Why is the oppression like it is? Why is life so hard? And yet here is a man who has come through all that, who is able to utter the incredible words that he writes here. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. See, at this point in his life, it's obvious he's been there, but he's also looking forward to, you know, if, if, this, is, if this lies ahead in my path, it's going to be okay. This is a man who's got some experience under his belt. This is a man who knows his God. And you know, there's no way to come to this place without going through some valleys of the shadow of death, are there? Is there? All right, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me at all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Praise God. And I probably mentioned this story before, but the story is told of something I suppose happened two or three centuries ago. There was some kind of gathering and there was an actor there of great renown and ability and there was a simple servant of God. Each one was asked to recite this psalm. And the observation afterwards, after listening to the eloquence of the actor, this person observed the actor knows the psalm. But this other man knows the shepherd. That's a pretty, pretty big difference, isn't it? And I believe with all my heart, God wants us in a greater way than we have ever known to know the shepherd. 